Okay, let's review this sequence, activities, process, and starting obviously with the inputs, we had the plans. So we had a very number of plans to work with, but obviously we're working with the project management plans. Ideally, of course, your schedule management plan because that's this is, of course, schedule management, and then that is going to help influence how we go about sequencing our timing, the uh, the ways that we talk about things, the way that the the um, things are divided up, everything else that you might have in your schedule management plan. But also, too, could be things in your resource management plan that is of use because things are going to be dependent on what resources you have and um, maybe equipment or people or the communications about how things are, are discussed or talked about, things like that. So beyond the project management plan, you also have various project documents. Now, I think that probably the one that is the most important project document would be the, well, <laughs> what is the list of activities that you need to do, which by, uh, as you can guess, is an activity list. So that activity list is going to as it says, it's going to list out all the things that you got to do and got to schedule. It also has the activity attributes, so explaining what it is, what it, more information about the the activity itself that needs to be scheduled. But you can also have things like the assumption log and the milestone lists, all various other project documents that could help you. And as pretty much in all of the various processes. You have your enterprise environmental factors, which is kind of like the environment in which you work in for good or bad. And so those are simply referred to as your enterprise environmental factors or EEF. And then you might have templates and procedures and policies and different uh, materials to assist you. And that's what we refer to as the organizational process assets. And an example here might be say, um, um, maybe there's a certain tool that you are using maybe there's a certain software within your organization that allows you to best move things around as your team is trying to sequence it and so you just use your computer to help perform all that but that software is available f for you because of your organizational process assets all right well that's the inputs let's get into the tools and techniques the tools and techniques there is one method now there used to be others but um, it pretty much just comes down to I have something which precedes something else from happening which precedes something else and so things can actually happen concurrently things like that but all of this comes down to is what we call PDM or preceding diagramming method so you put your activities on here whatever I'm just gonna use some letters and then you try to figure out well no D can't go here, it's got to go at the same time as C, but then C's also got to feed into F, and we actually we need uh, B, activity B here, so A is going to happen first. Yes, that's pretty much what's happening in your precedence diagramming method. That's pretty much the most important one, if not the only one that is of interest. Uh, and then you have the various different relationships that are going to help determine it, you know, uh, finish to start and start to start. and um, well, let's go uh, start to finish, which is pretty rare, but it could definitely happen. And then you're finished to finish. And I have a whole other video that explains that, obviously. So go back through your material from the crowd training, and, and we'll learn about that. Uh, also, too, you have to learn about or to remember your dependencies. So some things have to happen before others. Some things happened uh, because we want them to. So um, mandatory, discretionary, things like that. Um, you know, like, well, I have to lay a road down before I can... Ah, that was bad. <laughs> before I can start driving on it because otherwise I would just sink right in if I didn't pave the road. All right, so those are your dependency determinations. Um, also, you have to think about, well, I should probably let this material dry, and so we should have some lead and lags. In this example here, that's a lag because I want to wait until we have the dependency of people driving over it, and we need to wait, so that's a mandatory wait time. Sometimes we can get things done ahead of time, and that is your lead, so if you are starting to do something even before, uh, let's say the starter pistol for the 
the race is to begin. <laughs> All right, so um, <clears throat> also then you have various different project management information systems. So we might just draw a computer here, the various tools that you might use to allow you to help perform those work and those activities. And so then I'm running out of my whiteboard, so I'm going to uh, just kind of squeeze everything in here. But this was the dependencies, um, such things as mandatory and discretionary, things that you think you need or best practices should tell you that you need these mandatory ones are definitely what you need. All right, now let's move to the final review of the process, which is the outputs. Well, if the whole point is to sequence the activities, your output well should be a sequence of activities, whatever they happen to be, how they want to be performed, you know, things like the finish to start, start to finish dependencies, and if they're mandatory, and if there's any leads and lags, and then of course, the network diagram. So how they're actually presented is up to you and your project team. So we're just going to refer to as simply your network diagrams, because you have a diagram, and I'm using here the circle. So that's a uh, a pretty simple explanation but you could use different software systems that will present this in different ways nevertheless it really just is however your project schedule is presented in a network diagram because later on in the develop schedule you're you're working on adding more times and you're going to keep coming back to sequencing but how you present it here is just pretty much your output of your diagrams and then you should update all the documentation so that it fits. So things like the activity lists and any other project documents should be updated. And that is a quick look and reminder and review of the sequence activities process in the sixth edition of the PIMBOK.